What's up? Welcome to this week's video. I'm going to show you how to create a nice little image gallery with CSS Read and also a hero image section with some text and an image that will reposition itself on different viewports. So let's get started. So if we check this out, you can see here that this will scale to any viewport and it will change the number of images represented in this grid. And also this one, if we take a look, it will move the image to the top because otherwise when we have the image placed to the right, it will uh, usually place itself at the bottom of the text when we have a smaller screen size. But in this case, we're moving this image up to the top because we want the text to be placed under the image. And that is really easy to do with CSS Grid. So let's get to it. I created this sandbox here at codesandbox.io. And uh, for this one, I'm just going to have this HTML and I'm going to place my CSS in this file also. So I'm just going to use the index.html file. That's why I can close this one. And as you can see here, I just have some few images here that I've just collected from Unsplash. So we have these images here and we're going to start off with the hero section and style this one because now everything looks the same here. We just have these big images and the text at the top here. And that's no good. And as you can see, the hero image uh, is just uh, this div and it has uh, a column one and a column two. The column one has the text and the column two has the image. So we're going to create the style for this one now. So I create the style tag. And of course, this code is also going to be provided down below the video in a link so you can check it out yourself. All right, so we're going to set the call one first. And I just want to set a little bit of padding on that one. And we're also going to name it. CSS Grid has something that's called Grid Area. And you can name different elements with this property. So Grid Dash Area. And we're going to name this one text. And also note that we don't have quotes here. We just type in the name as it is. All right. So that's the column one. And then we set column two. This one we're just going to name and we name have the grid area again and we name it yeah, image. And I save it, reload and see what we've got. So we have this uh, little padding here. That's all we're going to see now. Also, I want to set the style on my images in this one. So IMD, this will set the style on all the images. I want to set the width to 100%. I want the max height of 200 pixels, and of course you can set this to whatever you want. I'm going to set the object fit to cover, and this works the same as you set uh, a background to cover. All right, then we have the border dash radius. I'm just going to set this one to 20 pixels. Save it, and I reload, and we can see what we've got, yeah. Yeah, a nice couple of images stacked above each other. And we're going to make some magic happen now with the hero image. So we can style this one. We have it here, that's called hero. So dot hero. And I'm going to display it as a grid, display grid. I'm going to set the margin to 20 pixels, zero. I'm going to set the background to light gray. I want to have a padding of 20 pixels on this one. I set the border radius, 20 pixels. Whoops. And now we're going to use these grid areas that we defined up here. And we can do that by typing grid-template-areas and the colon. We create quotes and I want the image. And on the next row, I want the text. So what I've done here is that I define that I want the image to go on top and I want the text to go at the bottom. I save it and reload it. And as you can see, we have our image at the top and the text at the bottom. And that's great. If I position them, for example, like this, I remove this one, save it. You can see that we got the image first and the text after the image. So grid template areas let you define how you want your different elements uh, positioned in the DOM. But for now, I will revert back to this one. And this is good, but we just want this to be stacked like this on the mobile devices. So we have to create a media query also for this one. We can create it down below here. 
at media and we set the min with 576 pixels. I think this is standard, for example, for bootstrap. Dot hero. And yet again, we set the grid template columns. And I'm going to use something that's called fragments. And fragments is something you can use in the, the CSS grid to kind of divide up your content in different columns. So if I set this one to two fragments and this one to one fragment, what this actually means is that this one is going to use two parts of the available space, and this one is going to use one part of the available space. So it's the same as 66.6%, uh, uh, and this one is 33.33% uh, 33 uh, 33 or something like that. So fragments uh, is really neat to use, but keep in mind that it will change depending on what width you have on the container, because this one is relative to that one. So in this case, it will take up two parts of this available space here, and this one will be one part. All right. And I'm going to change the grid template areas for this one, because this one is going to be when we're not on mobile devices, because this is mobile first. So this is the layout for the mobile. And when we reach 576 pixels, it will change to this one. So we have quotes, and I want the text first and the image after the text. Save it, and I reload it. And as you can see here now, if I change it, it will change nicely here, and that's great. And what I love about this is how easy it is to reposition the different elements, because as I told you before, this one would go at the bottom of the text if you didn't do, do it like this, because here I rearrange them and I tell CSS Grid that I want my image to be on top of the text. And you can do that with the easy use of grid template areas and uh, mark these divs with a grid area name. So that's really, really neat, actually, because this used to be a lot of problem before. And then maybe sometimes you have to have uh, two different images. So you have one that is displayed on each viewport. All right, so that's the hero image. And now we're going to change these little bad boys here. And that's actually really easy to achieve. We just need three lines of CSS for this one. I think we can put it, uh, yeah, maybe here. So we have our cards. That's the container for our images. I have this container div here. So I have the cards and then I have each uh, card here. And each card has an image. So on the container that's named cards, I set the display to grid. I want a grid gap of 10 pixels, and that's the space that's going to be, yeah, yeah, and I can actually save this one to show you. It's a grid gap, it's the space that's going to be between the images in the grid. All right, then we have the magic row here, grid dash template dash columns. And by using repeat, we tell it to repeat this pattern that we specify inside of the parentheses for each column. And we use something that's called order fill. It's going to fill out the space in the column. And then we use something that's called min max. And just as it sounds, you can specify the min value of the element inside of the grid column. And I'm going to specify it to 320 pixels. And then I want it to be one fragment as the max. And one fragment in this case will represent the complete width of the column. And in other words, this means when our image is less than 320 pixels, it will change the column count, so the image will not get less than 320 pixels. All right. And as you can see, in this viewport width, it created two columns for me. And if we change the viewport, as soon as the image gets less than 320 pixels, it will change. And then it fill out the complete width, because we set the max width to one fragment. So as soon as it can fit another image, in a new column that is at least 320 pixels, it will create a new column for us. And this is really great because now with just a few lines of CSS code, we have created a complete responsive grid and a complete responsive hero image. This is why I set the image to cover before you can see that it changes. And the default position is center on this one, so the image will be centered all the time if you don't change that one yourself. So it's really great to use uh, the cover property. 
Because sometimes when you have a user that uploads something in a CMS, they will upload images with completely different aspect ratios and uh, pixel sizes. So that's great. If you set it to cover, it will make sure that it will always be covered and it will reposition the image and scale it like this. So that's really great. I hope you enjoyed this one and that you get some ideas on how you can use CSS Grid. There's a lot more to CSS Grid, but I think these few things that I showed you here will get you a long way because I think this must be the most common use cases with Grid. And of course you can create more advanced types of grids with different sizes and stuff like that. But I won't go into that in this video. So see you in the next one.